What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Beard. So this go round, we'll be taking a look at foods that are banned in Europe, not the U.S. Now, this is something that I find highly interesting because, um, yeah, there's, I think a lot of the foods that are here, y'all probably, did, they probably wouldn't be allowed in a lot of other places. Like, there are so many ingredients for everything that is sold here, especially that is processed. It's not even funny between the preservatives and dyes and, uh, the allowance of stuff like insect parts and all kinds of nastiness. Yeah, so I'm interested to see. <laughs> I'm interested to see what foods uh, are banned uh, in the in, in Europe, but not the U.S. Just before we get started, some of you might know that I have another channel called Mega Projects, which is all about Mega Projects. If you don't subscribe to that, please do. Well, cat, you could have said that you got like four other channels. Just putting that out there. By popular demand, I wanted to cover some things on that channel that weren't quite mega enough for it, so I present to you a new channel called Side Projects, which is no longer that new, but hey, here we are. It covers secret Soviet space weapons, World War II's greatest airplanes, history's lost treasures, and the movement of London Bridge from London to a random town in America. Stuff like that. New videos three times a week on side projects. So if you are thinking you don't get enough videos from me, well, problem solved. There is a link below. The European Union is as suspicious as ever when it comes to foodstuffs containing chemicals, unnatural dyes, and meat treated with synthetic growth hormones. Syn since 1981, the EU has had stringent rules for the importation of food to its markets, and those rules have only gotten stricter with time. In 1989, it banned as many as six growth hormones, launching a trade dispute which has lasted 30 years and counting. Six growth hormones. I wish it was only beef that had this issue, but like the chicken and everything else like that, there seemed to be hormones it's a thing that's here like you find chicken and beef and stuff like that that says on the packaging hormone free don't understand it must be the wrong type of hormone all the skinny jeans we got being rocked around here 2003, it permanently banned one synthetic growth hormone while provisionally banning five others, and a whole host of dyes, chemicals, and preservatives are persona non grata in the EU as well. From hard shelled candy delights, milk, dyed salmon, and beef and pork treated with all kinds of hormones, here are 10 foods banned in parts of the European Union that are not banned in the United States. Number 10. Skittles. While not banned in the entire EU, Skittles are banned in Sweden and Norway for containing yellow dye number 5 and 6. In most parts of the EU, all that's required of the Wrigley Company, a division of Mars Inc., is to include a disclaimer suggesting that the candy could cause adverse health effects and hyperactivity. Still, it's thought that these dyes can cause allergic reactions in some people, and FDA tests have shown that red dye 40, yellow 5, and yellow 6 all contain cancer-causing agents like benzodine and 4 amino biphenyl. Red 40 seems to be in half of the crap that we have here. And people wonder why cancer is so prevalent. I didn't know that that's, they're considered to have stuff that causes cancer in them. That like, I'm surprised there's not a warning label on them in California. Because in California, anything that can have a minute, minute trace of anything they can take and cause cancer has a warning slapped on it. So... And the levels released in the body could be much higher than the FDA is reporting, thanks to the fact that routine tests tend to find less of these cancer-causing carcinogens than when they actually pass through the colon. Still, we've never heard of anyone in the U.S. being hospitalized after eating Skittles, but maybe that's just what they want you to think. Number 9. RBGH or RBST Milk The main reason cited by the European Union for banning both recombinant bovine growth hormone and its synthetic counterpart, recombinant Dominant bovine soma metropin, RBST, officially is due to animal cruelty concerns, but there may be other adverse health effects linked to the use of these hormones. Both RBGH and RBST have been tenuously linked to the developments of certain cancers. In addition to that, the FDA found that further study would have to be conducted to determine the impact these hormones would have on the liver and other organs. But in addition to the potential adverse health effects of RBGH in humans, cattle treated with the growth hormone are more likely to come down 
with a nasty case of mastitis, an inflammatory reaction in the outer tissue caused by infection from microorganisms. As a result of this disease, cattle in the U.S. are treated with antibiotics, eliminating mastocyst infections, but potentially causing other problems further down the line. Although the World Health Organization is primarily concerned about the over-reliance and overuse of antibiotics in humans, claiming that this could lead to the evolution of a superbug, 90% of antibiotics consumed aren't taken by humans. They're fed to otherwise healthy animals. And experts warn that this could lead to our livestock essentially becoming superbug factories. As the bacteria they harbor become more and more resistant to antibiotics, it's only a matter of time before these traits get passed on to bacteria that are harmful to humans. It's all a part of Agenda 21. I'm convinced it's all a part of Agenda 21. Population control. That's exactly what it does. In all seriousness, though, the FDA and the different government agencies that we have here, they don't care one whit. That's the reason why we're allowed to take and have all of this stuff. Like whenever people go, oh, approved by the FDA. Nine times out of ten, when something's approved by the FDA, like they just give it a cursory glance. They don't really take and dig down deep into it or nothing like that. Like they approve all kind of vitamins and crap like that to take and actually go onto the market without actually taking a look at them. They're just like, yeah, you can sell them. Like that's FDA approval without FDA approval. Like it's crazy. And the fact that this is this type like, why would you give something antibiotics when it's not sick? I don't quite understand that. Like I said, it's Agenda 21, folks. Agenda 21. Number 8. Papaya, Corn and Soy The genetically modified organisms or GMOs used in vegetables and fruit in the US have allegedly been linked to some nasty health problems. However, whether this is actually the case, we just don't know. While it is true that the... And you're not going to, because Monsanto, Monsanto, that, that company right there, that company, they, they don't release none of their findings. And whenever they do take a release anything, it's all peachy. It's all rosy. They take and own a lot of pesticides. Oh, yeah, it's safe. And then they find out, oh, shit, it causes cancer, and it's still pushed to American farmers. Rawr! The GMO thing. Like, I can understand. I understand taking and genetically modifying stuff for bigger yields. I can completely understand that because that way you feed more people like it's common sense it makes sense to take and do you know develop maybe something like that make sure it doesn't have any side effects you know no cancer causing properties and then instead of mostly using it here in the u.s send it to countries that aren't as developed that are agricultural that have problems with food scarcity, like that makes way more sense. Like the technology that we have here. Oh my God. I'd say I could say this is the type of stuff right here. It pisses me off if you can't tell. Um, whew. So GMOs definitely, that's the thing. They're, they're allowed here. Oh yeah, it's completely safe. It just helps taking, you know, makes them disease resistant and it takes and makes them, you know, up the yield and stuff like that. And I'm like, Bro, like any time you take a mess with genetic material whatsoever, you have unintended side effects. Whether you see it first thing or not is a different story. However, this stuff have been having been around for over 30 years at this point. Oh, it's completely safe. I just have to take your word for it at this point because I don't have a I don't have any other choice. Because your GMO crap is cheaper than the stuff that's grown organically with no GMOs at the farmer's market because you have to basically go to a farmer's market to find somebody that's taking and selling heirloom stuff because otherwise it's GMO at this point in this country. If you think I'm playing about that one, take and do some research. The US treats its produce and fruit with GMOs to make them more resistant to different diseases, and this can be largely beneficial. More research does need to be conducted in order to determine which of these is harmful to humans. Unlike the US and the FDA, the EU takes a far more cautious approach when it comes to approving GMOs, meaning that they must pass rigorous tests and environmental monitoring before they are deemed safe for consumption by citizens in their countries. However, even their system is not perfect. Recently, a batch 
batch of GMO-treated papaya began circulating through EU-controlled markets. The culprits appear to be farmers in Thailand who mass-produced GMO-treated crops. Number 7. Breads containing azodicarbonamide Azodicarbonamide, ADA for short, is a chemical used to bleach breads in order to increase their shelf life. Recently, companies like Subway, McDonald's, and other fast food restaurants have come under fire for using this chemical. ADA is also the chemical that allows bubbles to form inside foams and plastics like vinyl. The EU banned ADA because of its potential harmful effects on human health. Both. I would say I'm surprised, but I'm really not. Not at all. Potassium bromate, a chemical used in bread that helps it rise in the oven, and ADA have been linked to kidney and thyroid cancers in rats. So if China, Brazil, and the European Union have all banned the use of this chemical in their breads, well... <laughs> There's a problem whenever China has banned the use of it, and the U.S. is like, nah, piss on it, put it in there. You're good. Gotta love it. Why haven't the US? The fact of the matter is that the FDA just doesn't think it's dangerous. After multiple studies, it's ruled that it's not harmful in humans. The question you have to ask yourself is, well, which research do you trust more? And why? Number six, chlorine wash chicken. Chlorine plays many roles in the industrialized world. It's a powerful tool for cleaning water supplies, which otherwise might become contaminated and lead to the development of cholera when ingested, a disease which is extremely fatal if left untreated. But it's also used to clean other things, like chicken. Chlorine washed chicken means just that, chicken that's been washed with chlorinated water. According to most websites devoted to chicken and all things related to chicken, it's the internet, of course these websites exist, chlorine washing is a food safety practice which helps keep harmful bacteria from growing on poultry. But while the EU doesn't think that washing your poultry in chlorinated water will lead to adverse health effects, they do think it's a method of covering up poor hygiene practices. This understandably has made US exporters incredibly angry as it's a decision not based in scientific evidence, but rather on paranoia. Number five. I was gonna say, the chlorinated washed chickens, like, there's... Basically, your, your tap water is chlorinated to a certain extent if it's not coming from a well because of the different treatments and stuff like that. As Because here, your wastewater takes and gets... It, it basically goes through a, a waste treatment processing plant where they take out all of the nasty crap and all, all the poop and everything like that. They take and basically... Yeah, they make it drinkable water. That's the reason I'm glad I'm on a well. Anyways, that being said, <clears throat> one of the things they treat it with, if it's not fluoride, a lot of times there's also there's a, a bit of chlorination. Granted, it's not highly chlorinated water to where it's like pool water or nothing like that. It's it's part of the process of actually making it to where it's drinkable. So, but I could see the hesitancy maybe with something like that. I guess I don't know. Five instant mashed potato. I can. While the FDA will argue otherwise, the preservatives butylated hydroxyanazole (BHA) and butylated hydroxytololine found in instant mashed potatoes and pretty much every single packaged food you buy in the U.S. have been known to cause some cancers in rats. They're also known to impair blood clotting when consumed in high quantities, among other symptoms like hyperactivity. BHA and BHT are used primarily to prevent foods from excreting oils. This prevents them from going rancid and extends their shelf life. And you can probably guess what the European Union did about this. If you guessed that they outright banned them, then congratulations, you are correct. The strange thing about the situation is that the FDA admits that BHA and BHD are probably a bit carcinogenic in nature. The FDA certified... Do I continue to allow it? Oh my... They're probably carcinogenic in nature. Then tell people to take it out of their foods. Like, if... Number one, there's no reason why I should be able to take and buy... I, I, when I buy a 10-pound bag of potatoes, if I don't use them quick enough, that they start smelling like Yeah, they start smelling rain. I don't know if anybody's ever smelt, uh, smelt potatoes that have gone bad. Oh, my God. And if, oh, Jesus Christ. That, that'll that knock a buzzard off a gut wagon. Like, it's that, it's, oh, God, it's awful. So, if I take and buy powdered, you know, the, the stuff for the mashed potatoes, which is consistency of, crushed up cornflakes basically 
if I if I buy a box of uh, the powdered mashed potatoes and it's got something in it's gonna kill me, take it out. I mean, because it's what a dollar something a box, dollar dollar twenty five, dollar fifty a box. I mean, if that's all we're looking at here, if that's what we're mainly looking at uh, is you know for stuff like that, even other foods, take it out. Look, when I open it up and I smell rancid, I'll throw it out and I'll go buy another thing of it. And they wonder why cancer is so prevalent here in the U.S. Who knew? These food additives as GRAs, generally recognized as safe, but this just means that they're only regarded as safe up until a certain amount is consumed and never underwent pre-market review. Number four, Mountain Dew. You might be surprised to learn that your favorite lemon lime soda may contain a chemical typically used in a flame retardant, and this is an ingredient that has been banned in over a hundred countries. No, not surprised at all. I knew about this one, completely knew about this one, but I found out about it and I was like, hmm. What if that's what makes it taste good? The FDA tested the ingredients in Mountain Dew and found that they lacked enough conclusive data on one of its main ingredients, brominated vegetable oil, to decide whether or not it was safe to consume, although it's still labeled as GRAS. Of course, across the pond, it's a different story. Because it competes with iodine for receptor sites in the body, high levels of brominated vegetable oil in humans can lead to thyroid problems, autoimmune diseases, and potentially cancer. In fact, bromine is considered a toxin. Although brominated vegetable oil is still legal in the United States, states pepsi and coke decided to remove the ingredient from their soft drinks after public backlash Number did they really remove it though or did they just take and like leave it all the, leave it off the ingredients list that happens that being said like it seems like everything in the u.s is designed to kill us again you went agenda 21 and if you don't know what that is what i'm joking about when i say that go look it up <laughs> So it, it, that, but that one didn't surprise me whatsoever. I knew about the brominated uh, vegetable oil, like that's that was a thing that made the rounds on uh, different social medias probably seven eight years ago. So it's just, but what's surprising to me is the fact that they're like, all right, cool, cool. We understand that it's you know it, it might be toxic. No, nah, we're not going to we're not going to take it out. We don't think there's enough in there to actually cause any harm. But you know, for that process, my my thought process is. Um, have you not seen how much people have taken, you know, everything's done in excess here. So that includes drinking Mountain Dew. Number three, farmed salmon. Eating salmon has all kinds of health benefits, but people consuming anything other than freshwater or organic salmon might be consuming a harmful carcinogen. The European Union has outright banned farm-raised salmon for good reason. So what exactly separates farmed salmon from freshwater salmon? Well, that's the fact that salmon that are raised on farms are typically fed an unnatural diet of grain, antibiotics, and other drugs that leave their meat an unhealthy-looking gray. There we go again, Antibi uh, antibiotics. Makes you wonder if that's one of the reasons why we've got so many like uh, antibiotic uh, resistant forms of like MRSA and stuff like that here. Uh, different kind of staph infections and uh, things of that nature. Because it seems like everything in our food has got, it's, it's been treated with antibiotics. A. Propagators of farm-raised salmon use a chemical known as astaxanthin to dye the unhealthy gray away. You're probably guessing astaxanthin has been banned in the EU due to health concerns. And you'd be right. What's more is that freshwater salmon growing up on natural food sources retains a vibrant pink quality. Number 2. U.S. Pork Pigs in the United States are typically given food laced with ractopamine, a growth promotion drug which helps animals remain lean. The drug basically mimics the effects of stress hormones, allowing for the production of more meat while keeping feed consumption relatively low. So what might be the problem with this? Well, the company that produces the drug, Elanco, did their own testing on the drug, and this might be a decent indicator that some corners might have been cut. Shortly after the FDA approved the drug for use in American pork products, farmers began reporting that more and more pigs became non-ambulatory, which is a fancy way of saying that they can't stand or walk. These pigs tend to get treated very poorly in U.S. slaughterhouses, getting trampled and dragged by workers and electrically shocked by cattle prods in a cruel effort to get them moving again. More than 218,000 pigs are recorded as. See, we've also got the same type of problem. It's not. I don't think it's for the same, the same drug or anything like that. Or the same, which it could be. It might be the same growth hormone. But same thing with chickens. Like they get so big before they're actually taken and killed that they can't stand. They can't move. And it's. 
I'm gonna be honest with you. I, you know, if you're gonna have a slaughterhouse, don't take and do. It. We got to get away from the, the industrialized farming. And what I mean with that is, is like the, the farms that are made just to take and grow as big as possible pigs, chickens, and everything else at the expense of the health of the animals that are taken and, and being, uh, you know, raised this way because it's not humane whatsoever. It's not humane whatsoever. Um, but the problem is, is the industry is so big that it's not, I don't really seem going away from it. On the flip side, farmers, like independent farmers who actually take and grow, you know, cows and pigs and chickens and stuff like that, that actually take them, that wind up selling them to the market and stuff like that through these slaughterhouses. A lot of times they, they barely have any profit margin and it's, it's really like, it's aggravating. Like it really freaking is. Like there's so much I could go into as far as like my thoughts on the whole food industry here in the U.S. Because we're given the short end of the stick. There's no two ways about it having this condition. The FDA accused Alanco of withholding information. But despite this news, the drug is still allowed in the US. All that's changed is a big old disclaimer listing the drug's side effects. On this one, we can't really blame the for banning it. Sometimes being cautious pays off. Number 1. US Beef Much like the EU's reasoning on banning US-sourced milk, meat sourced from cattle raised on growth hormones cannot be imported to the European Union. Believe it or not, this decision has resulted in a long-standing trade dispute between the US and the EU, lasting 30 years and counting. Unlike milk, however, the ban on US beef extends to six different growth hormones, with estradiol being permanently banned and five others provisionally banned. This has resulted in US retaliation in the form of tariffs on selected food imports from the EU, an action that the EU has heavily criticized. Not all US beef is banned in the EU, though. Just recently, a deal was reached to allow a certain market share for companies looking to export organic beef, but the tariffs do remain. The US claims that the EU's decision is not based on on scientific evidence and that they're not treating farms that use synthetic growth hormones fairly. So I really hope you found that video interesting. That's the American way. Be wrong and then double down on that shit. They're trying to kill us over here. I think that's the whole point of this video. If you if you live in the U.S. and you eat food, they're trying to murder your ass. I think that's exactly what he just said. Just without taking and saying it that way. At least that's the way it seems. I mean, it, there's so much stuff that the FDA, and the FDA is a joke and it needs to be either done away with and and something else done in its place to take and put stuff in place for consumer protection as far as foods are concerned, um, which I say foods, food supplements and everything else like that. Or they need to take and highly strengthen and really put the, the money and the manpower towards making sure that the food that's ingested here in the U.S. by everyday people isn't going to take and kill them because of the additives that are put in it. But this being the U.S. and the way money works, the way the uh, lobbying works, that'll never fucking happen. So, who knew? Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.